is problem number one on the multiple choice, and it says, which of the following does not represent y as a function, function of x? So this type of problem requires you to uh, identify different types of functions and determine if they are functions or not. So, um, so you're going to need to know what the graph of them looks like, and um, you'll know that it's a function if it passes the vertical line test. So these are the four options that are given in the, um, in the multiple choice. So let's go one by one. Uh, the first one says y equals negative 2. So you might think at the beginning it's not a function of x because there's no x. But so when you graph this out, let's see what it looks like. So y equals negative 2 is going to be right here. So that means that um, every of whatever x that you're in, y is always going to be negative 2. So you're always going to have dots all around here. And then you're going to form a line that looks like this. Okay? So if we try doing the vertical line test, we see that at any point that we try to cross this function, we're only going to uh, be crossing the, the graph at one point. So this actually is a function. So just note that even though there's no x, it could still be a function. So go ahead and graph each one just to make sure. Now, uh, for part b, that's going to look like a diagonal line. Oh, that's going to pass through the origin. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. And um, you've gone over these uh, graphs in the lecture. If you can't remember what it looks like during the test, you can always plot x and y points. And what I mean by that is you can make a chart for x and for y and just randomly choose x's and plot them in to get your y. So in this case, for example, let's choose negative 1, 0, and 1. Sometimes the numbers you choose might not uh, look like something that you know how to graph, so just choose even more points to until you kind of see the pattern and realize what kind of graph it, it is. So at negative 1, we're putting it in here, y is going to be negative 1. At 0, y is going to be 0. At 1, y is going to be 1. I'm just putting it back into here. So that means I have point negative 1, negative 1, which is going to be here, 0, 0, and then I have 1, comma 1. So you kind of notice um, the, the shape. And if I do the vertical line test, at every point that I cross this graph, I'm only going to hit one point. That means that it's passing the horizontal line test, so this is also a function. So neither one of these is the answer. Now we're going to go to the third one. And you might recognize that this is the um, equation for a circle. So you might just go ahead and right away recognize that and say, okay, if the 1 is over here, that the, the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared equals the radius of the circle squared. So if this is 1, the, um, to get the radius, you need to square root that term. So r is going to be, or r squared is supposed to be 1. So that means that r going to be square root of 1, which happens to equal 1 as well. So you're going to have a tiny little zip circle around here where your radius is 1 each way. So when you try to do the vertical line test, oh, you hit, up, you hit two points. You realize you hit two points um, on this function. So that means that it's not passing the, the vertical line test, so this must not be um, a y as a function of x. So this is your answer. Now I want to show you something else you could do if you don't remember this equation for a uh, first circle. If you do remember, just go ahead and fast forward to see the solution for d. So one other thing you do is plot points like I did before. I already shared that, so I'm not going to do that again. Um, a third thing you could do is solve for y. To, to try to plot this. So I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. 
and I get y squared equals 1 minus x squared, and to isolate y, I need to do the square root of both sides, so this becomes, uh, and this is important, plus and minus, square root of 1 minus x squared. So then I get y equals plus and minus square root of 1 minus x squared. So this might be sort of a hint to remember that it's a circle, because if you have plus and minus, let's see. So the, um, the, the way that the square root graph looks like is like this. Now, when you have 1 minus x squared, you're shifting this. 1 here, and you're inverting it. So, well, I guess this might be a little more difficult to see, but the point is that you see that it's plus and minus, so this must be going down and up too. And that's the point I'm trying to make. So it's, it's going both ways, which means that when you draw a vertical line, it's not enough hassle. Okay? And now, lastly, for... Uh, uh, answer D, what we need to do is isolate Y, so I'm going to divide by X, that's the only thing I can do here, so these are going to cancel and I'm going to get Y equals 1 over X, and the graph of this, you should recognize, looks like with a vertical asymptote going through zero. So remember, if there's anything being added or subtracted underneath here or over here, that changes the shape if this is going to move sideways or up and down. But the, uh, the, hor the um, vertical asymptote still stands in between these two lines. So when we try to do a vertical line test, we see that at any point we try to hit, um, it's, or at any vertical line we draw, we're only going to hit one point on the graph. Even over here, you're only going to hit one point because this is not completely vertical. It's slightly changing, so just remember that. But uh, it should be fairly easy that when you see the equation for the circle, if you have remembered um, that that's a circle, um, it should be fairly easy to recognize that the answer is C.